It's literally a needle in a haystack. If you had asked me five years ago if I would ever find anything like this, I would say no way. It takes two days of driving to get out there. And it's a rough ride, you know, it's not on a freeway. <laughs> that area is called the Hongai. In 2010, we drove out there. On our way back from that, we stopped at sort of an overlook and looked out across this lava field. And I said, oh, that looks just like this place called El Mal Pais, which is in New Mexico. That's where a colleague of mine had extracted wood that was really ancient. I had a really strong gut feeling that we were gonna find something good there. And so finally I convinced them that we should go back out there. And unfortunately, my colleague Neil on the way back out to the lava flow got really sick and our equipment starts breaking down. It just doesn't seem worth it. But we made some collections and when we got that stuff back in the lab, it dated to the 600s. It was a gold mine. When the ring widths are very large, we know that we're looking at a wet period. And to see a 60 year period of increased growth, and it perfectly coincides with the rise of Genghis Khan. The whole point really is to bring the story alive, to tell the story of how past climates have helped shape this really significant historical event, the rise of the Mongol Empire. Genghis Khan just has a way of capturing people's imagination. Our hypothesis is that warm, wet conditions during the early 1200s allowed there to be high grassland productivity. So they literally transferred high grassland productivity into horsepower that they then used to conquer all of these outlying regions. It's still very preliminary. We need to have a much bigger sample to say with confidence and with accuracy what the climate conditions were actually like. Many historians get really kind of worked up about it. I looked in the historical literature and I couldn't find anything related directly to climate. It does give us an idea of how changing climate really affects societies. There's winners and losers. And in this case, in the early 1200s, the Mongolians were huge winners. I just think discovery, it's just such an incredible drive. And you feel like it's always just around the corner. And that's really fun. <laughs>